personally, because I really didn't, Jesus really didn't give me a choice. There are three things that you and I have to do. When you pray, when you fast, and when you give. He didn't say if. I would prefer he say if. That's when I have a choice if I want to do it or not. He say when, which means I have to do it now or later, but I don't have a choice, right? When you pray. He didn't say if you pray, if you give, or if you fast. He say when. What does that mean? It means you got to do it. So since we both stop with doing what he asks, right? <coughs> I guess we can talk about it. We have two choices. We can do it with joy, or we can do it with grumbling, grinding teeth. So we're going to do it with joy. So I'm not going to talk about all three of them. But today, I want to talk about the thing that you did, all the three things. You give, you fast, and you pray. Let me ask, how many of you already broke the fasting today? You don't have to raise your hand, but you know. Like 4 o'clock this afternoon, I get three phone calls. Father, is coffee and smoke broke the fast? I said, yeah! And they said, oh shoot, you can hear that on the other side. <laughs> well, the smoke, uh, yes and no, but coffee, yeah. Because people could drink coffee all day and don't have to eat. So, man, it's not easy. And twice a year, that's it, said, huh? And it's not easy. And today you see everything you want to put them up and drop it right into your mouth. The rest of the year you don't even care about snack. So I'm going to talk about the thing that you actually think is the easiest thing to do. But I think it's the hardest. What would you think that would be? The, one of the three. Which one would you think is easy? Prayer. Who else say something else? You all agree prayers? Come on, wake up, people! <laughs> you think prayer is easy? I think prayer is the hardest thing to do after three. Because when I fast, I either do it or I don't, right? I either make it or I don't make it. Am I right? When I give, I either give or I don't. But prayer is not just either or. Because a lot of time when this praying, but this not here. <laughs> this and that doesn't go. I mean, how many times during Mother Mass here, your mind is wander somewhere else? And some of you probably doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? So when the prayer, the real prayer is not easy. We think it's easy, but it's not. Because the, this one and this one doesn't work. It doesn't sink. And when this and this work, this doesn't go with that. An a angry, not peaceful heart doesn't go with it. So we got to have this and this and this synchronizing with one another. That's not easy. It's not. And when this and this and this synchronize, man, it requires this one to be open. And that's even harder. Because a lot of time we in one heart, one voice, one mind, asking for a favor from God, because I desperately need it. Right? Those moments. But then we don't open this to listen. And I don't think I'm alone in this one. And you guys are the same way we are. Most of you are so holy that you can pray perfect. And just Martino is the only one who like. I get distracted every time I pray literally. Even when I celebrate in Mass, I get distracted, believe it or not. So praying, as we think, is easy. Actually, it's not. We try to do it. And some people say, oh, Father, man, I couldn't even sit still and pray for 10 minutes. I say, 10 minutes? You are that damn good? <laughs> Shoot, how many years have you trained for that? I can't even 
can do seven minutes, and I need a place for 15 years. <laughs> Plus, not, not counting the four years in the cemeteries. I mean, the seminaries. <laughs> My dad say that all the time, you know. He always, I used to come home back from school and he introduced, oh, this is my son, he just came back from the cemetery. <laughs> but anyway, and you know, how do I know that? Because sometimes when I pray, I try to set my mind focus. Just listen to God and talk to God. And I set the, 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 the watch on your phone. I thought it's going to be like 45 minutes. It's come out fine. So not easy. So start out simple. Well, my goal this land is for you to really pray, really connect with God. Maybe start out with the Our Father, the Hail Mary, says it and means it, and co and, and connect it with God. What my point is this: during this land, let our prayer become connecting to God, like soul to soul. You know what I'm talking about? Let, let us pray and talk to God, ask who he is, your lover. Now, you know, your husband and wife, you know that there are times you, your wife says something and he says, Oh, can you talk to me because I'm watching TV? <laughs> you know? Or, hey, how many of you listen? Yeah, I'm talking. You keep talking. I'm just talking to a friend, but I'm listening to you. But there are moments in your life you need that intimate connection. And during this land, that's what we try to move to. That internal connection between you and God, when you and pray, when you communicate and talk to God. That's what we're going to move forward to. We're going to allow the Lord who touched our souls, because you know that's why he came now. I said it over and over. For our, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven to earth. So he's going after your soul. Salvation has nothing to do with this beautiful looking body you're looking at right now, you know? It's got to do with the soul. So let make that connection this light. And you know, I talk about that all the time. You know, I, I talk about, I've been here with you almost five years, believe it or not, huh? It's about time for me to leave, you know? Uh, but anyway, this past five years, you know the theme. What is my job? What business I'm in? I'm in business of what? I'm going after what? Going yes. yes. after your soul. That's what I do. But man, I have two years left. I told you, Sailor, I changed my mind. I'm going to go after your money. So Jesus is going after your soul now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go after your money. Yeah, we're going after your soul. That's why you're here. Because together, we want to move to a closer to God. So during this Lent, let match that connection. I want to see that transformation in you and in me. That spiritual awakening. We cannot have that awakening when you actually can feel like I can touch God myself. I can close my eyes. I can sit in that corner. I can experience His true presence touching my soul. And let me be honest with y'all, I don't know how my many, I intend to be here 20 more years, but I don't think you guys want that, by the way. But let's just say three, four years. If every year from the last two, three, four years here, I get 25% of them, it's been by the time that I leave here, 100% of you have that spiritually awakened. And by that time, you don't need me. You know why? You have your direct connection with God. And talking about that spiritual internal connection. Every year, I mean here, this is our fifth land season. We can go back and remember every land we have a theme, right? I don't know if you still can remember anything. Tell me one of the four things we did. What the salt? What was the prayer? Salt have to do three things. To keep it fresh, right? To preserve the food, to make it taste good, and to do toasting. And what's the prayer on that? Lord, help me to preserve your truth. Bring out the goods of others. And toast for your sacraments and words. 
What is the second year? What did we do the second year? A black. Nails, right? And every one of you will probably remember that. So you feel it in here, you feel it in here. And we nailed it in front. Well, what is the point? Nail in our own. And I said, what was the only thing that man made in heaven? The nails holes of Jesus. Oh. God the Father didn't create it. No, we did it. That's the only thing that man made in heaven. Every one of you carry a, what, a, a 12 inches nails the whole length. I remember that Good Friday. You still remember that, right? We walked the station by the time crucified Jesus, the huge cross up here, and every one of us brought that nails up and we nailed them because we want to die with Christ so we can rise with them. And that's what the following year. No, the hand, the light. You are the light of the world. Every time, and how did you become that light? When you received the body and blood of Christ, you came over and lit that candle. What is going to be this year? Many of you have walked through the last 40 years, 50 years, 60 years of life. It's all the same. Fast and pray. No, every year it's the same thing, but in a different way. Why well, this year? You walk in that church, probably you have seen, and some of you might already stole my crosses in front when you call me. Yeah, stole, because I never said I did. Right? So I'm not stealing. I will forgive you for $20 a piece. You know? <laughs> okay? You saw those crucifix put it there. Why do I leave it there? It is for you. Each and every one of you can take one home and wear it. The Catholic Church talked about indulgence. And if a cross, a crucifix being blessed by the Pope, it's not the priest, okay? It has to be blessed by the Pope. And you wear that, and then you slow, you know, develop a, a relationship, you hold it, and you say, God, I love you, you know, or I praise you, thank you for being my savior, whatever those words. And at the end of your life, if then in the case of no priest present to give, the anointing of the sin. If that person who had devoutly loved, developed that devotion for the cross that he wear, blessed by the Pope, met the same love towards the cross, either by word or by intention, if there's no priest available, that act forgive all the sins that person ever committed. And now those crucifix has been blessed personally by Pope Francis. It is for you to take it home, to wear it, to develop that devotion to the cross of Jesus Christ. It is my duty. It is my job. It is my obligation as your pastor to bring you to meet Jesus. I do whatever it takes. I hope you'll be part of it. So take it home tonight. We have some of them already have the string on for you to wear. All the doubt, you can pick them up, put it in. Some of you already wear uh, change. Why, what do we call that? Uh, <laughs> you can just put them right in there. I do that. I just put it in there. I make it easier because I worry that by the time I die, I may be painful and complaining. So I, if people say, well, Father, we worry about every time you talk. I said, I do too because I don't know what I'm talking. <laughs> so here's the thing. I don't even say that. I can keep it and put it in my mouth and, and kiss it. That's the easiest and shortest one. And John? It's okay, see, uh, see after that season all the time, but we'll be okay. Her husband is here. She just worried about this time. But again, that's what it is. It is for you to use it. Take it off. Remember to connect with God. Not just doing this land, but for the rest of your life. Have that spiritual of what can have this and this and this synchronized with one another and then when it does open this by that time you'll meet with us all.
because God will be talking directly to you. And when we can listen to God, that's how we get to heaven. Until then, may everything we know. Give the glory to God's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.